Hi, my name is Shane Young with Bold Zebras, and today we're going to talk about the difference between shutting down a virtual machine inside of Azure and stopping a virtual machine. At first glance, they seem very similar, so I just want to kind of walk through what is the difference. Um, really, at the end of the day, what's the difference in your Azure bill between stopping and um, shutting down? So here you can see we're in the Azure portal, and so I have a um, DC1, he's up and running, life is grand. And so what we want to do is we're going to switch over to the remote desktop and we're going to just shut him down. So we're going to hit start and power and shut down. Windows like, hey, what's up? No problem, Windows, shut her down. So then that takes us back over. So we're over here in the uh, portal and we're going to give you know the VM 30 seconds or so to shut down. So we'll hit pause. Okay, and so after about a minute or so, the VM shut down and I refresh the Azure portal and you can see that its state is it stopped but still incurring compute charges. So what happened was on the Windows side, right, we did a shutdown. So the VM's like, hey, I'm off and great. But on the Azure side of the house, it's like, all right, well, that VM shut down. But because it's still in this state, um, you're still incurring compute charges. And that's because this machine is still reserving its public IP address. It's still reserving its dynamic IP address. So all of uh, those pieces are still there. So I could just easily hit start and it'd be the same as just hitting the power button, right? Boom, back up, we could log in again. That'd be great. But in reality, if you shut down your Azure VM, maybe you wanna shut it down for the weekend, right? You're trying to save some dollars. So you're gonna shut it down for the weekend. Uh, what you wanna do here is if you hit stop, do you wanna stop this VM? Yes, I do. And so now that I'm stopping the VM, uh, you can see it's deallocating the resources. So it's going to get rid of the uh, dynamic IP address. It's going to get rid of the public IP address. So this VM is truly off. And the nice thing about that is that's going to then release me from paying compute charges. Now I'm still going to pay um, storage charges for you know the, uh, the hard disk being out there and any other add-ons I might have had. But the uh, cost for having a CPU and you know the, the RAM and all that allocated to this machine are gone. So you need to kind of keep that in mind. You know, do you want to shut down a VM or do you want to stop a VM? Now, one of the downsides of stopping here as soon as it finishes deallocating, we'll hit refresh here and see if we can, if it did already. Refresh, click on DC1. Okay, so after a minute or so, it finally uh, stopped. And so now you can see I don't have an IP address anymore, right? So all the resources have been deallocated. So I'm no longer uh, incurring those compute charges just the storage and other uh, pieces. Now, the important thing to note though, so when I hit start here, say yes, what's gonna happen? Well, it's gonna put updates on it looks like, uh, but one of the things that's gonna happen is it's gonna go and get a new public IP address. So if you saved your RDP files, right, for connections and stuff, those aren't gonna work anymore. So you're gonna need to hit uh, the connect button here again, right, and download the new RDP file so you can connect back in. Same usernames and passwords are all gonna work, of course, but uh, you know that type of stuff has changed. Also, if uh, the internal IP, right? So if on your virtual network it had a uh, dynamic IP, that's going to have changed as well. So you'll have to kind of reallocate all of that also. So just a quick little video here to kind of help you guys understand the difference between uh, stopping a VM and uh, shutting one down, and how that affects both your address charges and how you connect to these VMs in the future. Hopefully you've liked this video. If you have, please subscribe to the channel and leave me any comments down below on things you might have wanted to see done differently or videos you'd like to see for next time. And as always, I'm happy to help. You can connect with me uh, via Twitter, at Shane's Cows, or you can, we can work together on your Azure, your SharePoint, your Office 365 problems if you hit me up on www.boldzebras.com. Thanks and have a great day.